So you're starting to get the hang of filming your own self-taped auditions and you're looking to expand your knowledge so that your videos can be more polished and refined. Here are some more advanced tips to make sure that your self-tape is as professional as it can possibly be. Before you watch this video, make sure you go over and watch the beginner's tips first, because a lot of these tips won't make sense unless you've seen that video. The casting director may request a full body shot to be included in your self-taped audition. This is usually required when the character that you're auditioning for has a specific height or build. You should include this shot at the beginning of your video, right after the slate. To avoid cleaning your entire room for one quick wide shot, many actors will record their full body shot in portrait mode and then combine it with a closer shot in editing software. If you're filming in a smaller room and you can't move your camera back far enough to get your full body in frame, a shot from the knees up will also be acceptable. A blank white wall is an acceptable background and it's usually the quickest and easiest one that people use because it doesn't require any setup time. However, this background can make many people look a bit washed out, especially if they have a lighter skin tone. To rectify this, many actors will opt for a blue, green or grey backdrop, usually considered the industry standard. Using a bed sheet or a similar type of fabric can create great results but you'll need to iron or stretch out your sheets to get rid of any creases, as this can look very unprofessional. If you plan to self-tape often, it may be worth purchasing your own professional photography backdrop. These can be picked up online for about $50 to $100. Most DSLR cameras have very poor inbuilt audio quality. It's highly preferable to purchase a clip-on shotgun mic to record the audio. The Rode VideoMic Pro is a fantastic option, and its smaller sibling, the VideoMic Go, is also a good choice if you're looking for a decent mic at a lower price. You can also buy clip-on mics for phones. You just need to make sure that the type of mic you buy will work with your brand of phone. Whatever mic you use, make sure you're pointing it in the right direction. Your reader is not the star of the show and you want to make sure that your voice is clearer than theirs. Try to film in a carpeted room where possible. This may sound a bit strange, but filming in a room with a harder surfaced floor can create a lot of echo, which can be distracting. If you have no choice but to film in a room that's a bit echoey, you can actually soften this effect by laying rugs or towels on the floor. Before filming, you should also switch off any electronic devices that create humming noises, including fans, heaters and air conditioners. If you're filming near a kitchen, it could also be a good idea to turn off the fridge, as long as you remember to turn it back on again when you've finished. Your camera's white balance can really affect the colouring of the shot. If it's not set correctly, the white balance can cause the shot to look way too warm or way too cold. And this will make your skin tone appear very unnatural. Many cameras will adjust the white balance automatically, but some others will require you to do it manually. It differs from camera to camera, and it's your responsibility to figure out how it works for your camera. For instance, this Canon camera has different white balance presets for shots in bright daylight and clouded areas. Most phone cameras will adjust white balance automatically based on your surroundings. One of the great things about a self-tape is you can film as many takes as you want. You should only send your best work to the casting director, so feel free to run through the scene a few times and then just pick your favourite take at the end. You could also try to film the scene a few different ways. For instance, here, we tried the scene through once. Every week, you come in and try and get free chips. I'm telling you, it's not going to happen. And then we tried it through again with more anger. Every week you come in here trying to get free chips. I'm telling you, it's not going to happen. 
If you end up with two really good takes that showcase different approaches to the scene, you can actually send both off to show off your versatility. Just make sure that you edit them together into one file and cut out your introduction on the second take so that you're not introducing yourself twice. Most casting directors will really love to see a couple of different interpretations of the same scene, but you shouldn't include this if the casting director has asked specifically just for one take. A good self-tape requires a good reader. The casting director is going to be interested in how you can bounce off other performers, and this can be really difficult to gauge if you've just roped in a parent or housemate to read for you. It can be very distracting if you're acting your heart out and the reader is reading the other lines in a dull monotone. So try to make sure that your reader is also an actor. If you have a few actor friends who all need to film self-tapes, it could be a good idea to meet up and film them all at once so that you have plenty of actors on hand to read for different scenes. You need to wear something that is a different color to the background so that you stand out. You don't need to wear a full costume, but it can be a good idea to wear something that fits the style of your character. For instance, if your character is a fish and chip shop owner, you could wear an apron. You should avoid wearing t-shirts with words or logos on them, and you should steer clear of anything with fine stripes, as this will cause a distracting moiré effect in the recording. In terms of makeup, you should aim for a basic, natural look. Something that accentuates your features and removes blemishes, but without seeming too over the top or artificial. The oil from your pores can create a shiny effect on camera, and you can minimize this by using powdered makeup to remove the shine. You can find countless tutorials online that will teach you how to apply a basic film makeup look to yourself. It can be very frustrating to rely on the sun for your lighting. If you plan to self-tape often, it could be worth purchasing some film lights. If you're buying film lights online, you need to be very careful that you don't get ripped off. For example, some film lights can be extremely cheap because the bulbs break easily and you have to constantly buy new bulbs. So make sure you read reviews and if the price seems a bit too good to be true, it probably is. This example self-tape was lit with a set of three redhead film lights, but you could also achieve great results with this $20 ring light which we purchased at a department store. When setting up your light, it's usually not the best idea to shine it directly in your face, since this can create a harsh, unpleasant light. To create a softer diffused light which is a lot more desirable, you could place a white sheet or shower curtain in front of the light or bounce it against a white piece of cardboard or even just a nearby wall. So once you've finished filming, you may need to compress your footage so that it's small enough to send online. This can be done in any editing software and it's recommended to compress your video to under 100 megabytes. This process will vary depending on what software you use, for instance, in iMovie you can move this dial up or down to make the file smaller or larger while still keeping it high definition. What you'll need to call your file can vary from job to job, but at the very least, you should include your name in the title so that the video isn't mixed up with anyone else's. Most video files are too big to send as an email attachment, so when you're ready to send your video off, you may need to use a file sharing service such as Google Drive, Vimeo, or Hightail. Unless the casting director asks for it to be sent on a specific platform, the choice is yours. But no matter what, it's really important that your file isn't publicly accessible, because audition scripts are very often private and confidential. Most of these services have the ability to create a private shareable link. You just need to make sure that the person on the receiving end of the link has been given permission to open it. You can usually approve individual emails, but it might be more straightforward to set it so that the link is accessible to anyone who receives it. You can test to see if this works by opening your link in a private window. If it works, then it's ready to send off. So there you have it, we hope that you employ these tips to create more professional self-tape videos during your time at Acta and into the future. If you have any further questions, feel free to email them to your Acta teacher. 
Thanks for watching and happy auditioning.